Hello, this is Stuart Knockbar with Educated Quest. Uh, with me is Jalen McGee, soon to be a graduate of North Carolina State University. Jalen and I accidentally met on the world's greatest networking site, LinkedIn. <laughs> and Jalen has done what college admissions officers hope students mm -hmm. they admit will do take advantage of the various educational opportunities that the school offers, learn to find internships, make connections, and walk out with a career, a direction, and hopefully from the education and the experience and network that will help them for the rest of their lives. Jalen, thank you for joining me this morning. Thank you for having me. Okay, tell me, where are you from? Are you from North Carolina or another state? Yes, I'm from Durham, North Carolina, so not far from Raleigh, where NC State is. Did you live on campus, or did you commute to NC State when you were getting your education? Yeah, so um, I, I lived on campus my freshman year and sophomore year, and then for my junior and senior year, I commuted. Uh, from an apartment or from your family's home? Uh, so for my junior year, I actually live with my sister who also lives in Raleigh. Um, and then for now for my senior year, I uh, am commuting from an apartment. So you, you've, you've done what a typical big university person does. You live on campus, get settled, get to know the school, and then you, and then you, you move off. Most people, right. most, most people do that. Um, you're, you're graduating with a degree in industrial and systems engineering. Was that your original major or did you change your mind? Yeah, that's not my original major. Um, I came in studying electrical and computer engineering. And then during my sophomore year, I changed majors to industrial and systems engineering. What led you to do that? Yeah, so um, it was a lot of different factors that led to me doing that. First, first of all, um, when I was taking my electrical engineering classes, one thing I really noticed was that you, they taught us at a very granular level um, how technology works and like down to like how the circuits inside of the technology that we use works. And when I would reflect on like what I wanna do and who I am and what I'm good at, I'm good at kind of a strategic level of thinking um, and more of a, like a systems level, like that granular level, like being very in the weeds with how technology works and what you have to do to make uh, an electronic tick, that, that's not my strong suit. So that was the first factor, really reflecting when I was in these classes and electrical engineering labs and we would be um, like learning how electrons are flowing and things like that. It wasn't really something I was too interested in. And then another factor was I had an internship at a company called Bandwidth in Raleigh, North Carolina. And there I was a project management intern for, uh, for the engineering and software development teams. And there I really got to get an understanding of what it takes to think at a systems level, at like a large strategic level with like, how is this project gonna progress long-term? What is this project gonna turn into? So I really uh, gained an affinity for thinking at that like, um, kind of abstracted level of high level thinking. And that's what led me to kind of uh, seek a change to the industrial and systems engineering department because here in industrial engineering, we really learn like a large scale, how can we impact an entire system over time? Like how can we predict how this system is gonna um, work long term and things like that. So those are um, a couple of things that prompted my change. You raise an interesting point because it seemed like you like real world more than you did yes. theory. Let's yes. say you were to go back to your high school, your high mm -hmm. school teachers, the school counselors were to invite you to come back mm -hmm. and you met someone who was a freshman or sophomore in high school was interested in engineering. What would you tell them to study? How would you tell them to prepare for a college education in engineering? Yeah, that's a great question. So for engineering specifically, um, the first thing that I would give advice about is thinking about the engineering design process. Uh, this is something that all engineering disciplines really take into account is how do you go from like an idea, how do you iterate through um, creating something new so, or creating something that's innovative and then actually producing what that is. So that would be my first piece of advice. Um, learn about the engineering design process. 
Uh, no matter what type of engineering you go into, that is something that will help you. Another thing that I would advise them to do is really research the different types of engineering. Because um, I came in very intent on electrical engineering. I had my life planned out. I said, I'm going to be an electrical engineer. <laughs> I'm going to work in renewable energy. I'm going to do all these things in electrical and computer engineering. And then, but when I got and I actually got into the classes, into the lab, I learned that I didn't know what electrical engineering actually was. <laughs> Uh, I thought like I would be able to work on solar stuff. I'd be able to work on robots. It would be fun and cool. Um, and it, it was different than what I thought it was. So those would be my main pieces of advice. Learn about the engineering design process and then really research what the different types of engineering there are out there and what each one has to offer. When you were in high school and when some of your NC State classmates were in high school, did they have that kind of opportunity to see the design process or was college the very first time that they did? Uh, so I got a chance to see it in high school very late. So NC State had these various like days where high school students could come to campus and uh, high school students who were intent on engineering as well could come to campus. And we participated in some like um, miniature labs where we would like build a bridge out of straws or something like that and we got to understand the engineering design process as like i think we were high school seniors then um but other than that we did not have many um chances in in high school like through our classes or extracurriculars to uh to really engage in that was there robot like first robotics or some of these other programs I believe there were, that I believe my school did have first robotics. I did not participate in, in it. Uh, I, I think it had it when I was there, but I'm not totally sure. Did um, these uh, events on campus convince you to choose North Carolina State over another school? Yes, these events. So there was one professor in particular that I met um, who was an electrical and computer engineering professor and she had her PhD in it. And like, she was one of the main driving factors for me to go to NC State because I just saw her enthusiasm about electrical engineering. She would always talk about how electrical engineering is one of the best engineering to go into because you, uh, you're so valued when you go into the job market. She would say, everyone needs electrical engineers and things like that. And she really convinced me to um, go to NC State and study electrical engineering. Um, the other factor that really drove me to NC State was a scholarship that I got, the Goodnight Scholarship, um, which covered, um, was a full, full, full ride scholarship. So That's that was my other, <laughs> other thing that drove me to NC State over some of the other schools that I got into. So you definitely got a great return on your investment. Yes, definitely got a great return on my investment. Now, um, you have, you, one of the reasons that we chatted before today is you had, you've had several internships, mm -hmm. and typically um, a high school student has graduated with, with one, maybe two. You've had how many? I've had four internships. So you started after freshman year? I had an internship during the transition from my high school to college. So the summer of 2016, I had an internship, a software engineering internship at a startup in Durham that one of my high school teachers connected me with. And then um, during my freshman summer, um, I went to China and I got a chance to study abroad. Uh, and then each of the subsequent summers after my um, sophomore year, I had internships. Did you study in China through North Carolina State or through somewhere else? Yes, it was a study abroad through NC State. What was it like to apply for the very first internship when you were still in high school? Yeah, um, so for that one, it was pretty simple because my teacher, one of my high school teachers knew the um, CEO of the company, of the startup, and she connected me with that opportunity. Um, after that, though, the application process while I was in college, it was, it was a lot. I didn't know how much it would be, um, especially for a tech 
internships. They're very competitive. Um, there are students now uh, who like come out of high school with coding experience and taking coding classes and things like that. I didn't uh, take coding classes in the high school. So um, I applied to several, several different things. Um, and we'll probably get to this a little later, but I applied for Microsoft every year and I didn't get it until my <laughs> junior year. But, um, but when, you, when I was applying, one thing that I really focused on was um, cur like cur making sure my resume fit this specific job description every time. Um, and I would really focus on talking about how my, uh, how the schoolwork that I was doing and the classes and the projects that I did in class would fit for the specific job descriptions. Because as a college student, you don't have a lot of work experience. The main thing that you can talk about is your classes and extracurriculars. So that's why I really focus on. So you wrote a different resume and a different cover letter for each position? I have never written a cover letter. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I've only written resumes. Uh, I did, there was one class that I took where we had to write example cover letters, um, but I've never submitted a cover letter for any of the internships that I applied for, but I did always make sure to change my resume to fit the job description of every internship I applied for. So was the lack of a cover letter due to the web-based recruiting or on-campus interviewing? You just yeah, dropped the so, resume in the box? Yes. Yeah, so at NC State, we have huge engineering career fairs. And at the career fairs, the, what they always tell you to bring is just your resume. Um, and they, I've never brought a cover letter to any of those um, career fairs because they would have tons of companies there. There would be huge lines. Um, but also, like you mentioned, the online applying um, did, frequently didn't ask for a cover letter for the internship. So I didn't submit one for that either. So you talked about career fairs a moment ago. Um, how nervous were you at the first one? I was terrified uh, because I was um, I was a sophomore uh, the first time I went to one. I walked in and it was humongous. They're like, uh, it felt like a hundred companies there. Students were, I mean, there were so many students. And not only students from NC State, students from other institutions come to NC State's career fair as well because it's so big. Um, so I was terrified. I, I, my strategy was, there were, I always had a few companies in mind um, that I wanted to talk to. They will always advertise the companies that were coming. So I always had a few companies in mind. So I would always start off going to the career fairs, talking to companies who I did not really uh, care about too much to get my feet under me and to go ahead and get that conversation, like practice the conversation that I wanted to have with the companies I really wanted to talk to. And I found that a really good strategy just to um, get into the flow of like what these things, what kind of things the recruiters are gonna be asking me and things like that. So if you were to talk to someone now who is about to go to their first one, mm -hmm. um, what would you advise them to do to prepare? Yeah, um, first and foremost, always, pick the companies that you really want to talk, talk to. I always have my top five. Um, and when you pick those companies, so for me, it was my top five companies, do extensive research on what they, what they offer uh, and do extensive research on what um, interns do at that company. So if you're coming to a career fair and you're looking for an internship, you can pretty much always go on LinkedIn, find someone who was an intern at that company at one point in time, reach out to them and say, hey, what, what was your internship like? Um, that's one really good strategy to understand what it would take to be successful in those internships for those different companies. Uh, so first and foremost, do extensive research on the company, make sure you know what they offer, make sure you know what they do. And then uh, what I'd also say is really practice your conversational skills, because one thing that um, has always went well for me when I went to um, career fairs is that like the people, the recruiters that I talked to, they really liked having a conversation with me. And um, one time I even got a compliment on like, you, I, I mean, it's it nice to have a conversation with you. Everyone, like every tech person or every tech college student can't like hold a cohesive <laughs> conversation for a long time. So I really practice like having a regular conversation with a professional. Um, like, of course, we always have conversation with our friends and things like that, but have a conversation where you 
ask someone about them, about their work, ask them about what they like about their work, and then just uh, just practice that conversation. It's something that um, they will really remember you if you have a good conversation with them. So those are my two pieces of advice. Do employers come to NC State to do information sessions as well as participate in the career fairs? Yes. So there are several times throughout the year where a company will come and just have an information session. They'll just set up a booth in a, in a building um, and you can go and talk to them uh, about their company, about their opportunities, uh, and they will have some at the career fair as well. Um, and then they'll even have different size career fairs um, for um, different majors. So, uh, so yeah. Okay. What can you tell? What can you tell us about the recruitment process for Microsoft at intern for in, being an intern at Microsoft? How is it yeah. different from other companies? How did it, how did it stand out for you? Yes. So first, I'll start with the recruitment process, and then I'll talk about the internship itself. Um, for the recruitment process for Microsoft, it felt. Uh, when I was applying, so like I mentioned earlier, my first two times that I applied, I didn't get in. Um, and when I did that, it was like, it felt like I was kind of throwing my resume into like a black box that maybe no one would ever see because um, I applied online and I knew, I knew there are thousands of applicants. I just knew that. Um, so I really felt like oh, I'll just take a chance and then I'll just uh, I'll just throw my resume in there. Um, so for the first two times I applied and then didn't hear anything back. And then the third time I applied my junior year, um, I got uh, an email to do uh, and Microsoft was coming to my school to do on site interviews. So that was really when I knew, okay, something different with this one, because I got invited to interview at an on-site interview at my school. And then when I got to the interview, it was, I mean, it was a pretty, it was an interesting interview for me for, for a couple of reasons. First, um, I was interviewing for a program management role at Microsoft, a program management intern role. And I had, I, I didn't have much experience in management, but I looked up what the job was. I looked up what it takes, uh, what Microsoft looks for in program managers. And I got an understanding that we, that they do a lot of product development. So you go and you understand what customers want and how to translate customer wants into actual products. So I had done uh, that in my industrial engineering classes, which is very fortunate. Uh, we, I had a product development class where I, uh, we designed something for customers and built it. So I really talked about that a lot in my interview. And what, what the main thing that was different in my interview for Microsoft the first time around was they asked me to design uh, an app, a travel app. And I had no idea they were going to ask me that going in. Uh, it was just, I, I didn't know anything that they asked. So I, there was a whiteboard in the room. They gave me a marker and they said, on the board, design a travel app. Uh, and just walk me through it while you're designing it. So I was, uh, I was sweating at that point because I didn't, I, I, I of course had some ideas, but I didn't know if my ideas were good enough and things like that. So uh, after I designed it, then um, they came the next question. Okay, what if somebody were blind uh, and designed it for them? So what considerations would you make for a person who was blind? So that that. That's the, my experience with my initial interview. Uh, and then after my initial interview, um, they said, we'll, we'll let you know and all that kind of stuff. And then I got a phone call that uh, the recruiter said, hey, your first interview went well. Uh, we want to fly you out to Seattle for your final round. So that was the process for going to the final round of interviews. And then uh, for my final round of interviews in Seattle, um, I had four different interviews um, and then they were with four different members of the same team. And then after that is when uh, I flew back and then they gave me the offer. Now you, you, you did more than one internship there. Yes. Did they invite, just invite you to come back after you finished the first one or did you have to go through the process again? 
Yes, so um, I, I did not have to go through the process again. Uh, what Microsoft does is once you're halfway through your internship, they start giving you um, information about your, if you will be invited back or not. So it's based on your, uh, based on your performance up to the midpoint. And then at the midpoint, you have a midpoint review and they tell you if you're on track to receive a return offer or not. So you can um, uh, adjust your work accordingly. But I did not have to go through any other interviews. When I did my internship the first time, I, I did get an option to switch teams within Microsoft. So I got a chance to just talk to one of the managers of the team I was switching to, but it was no formal interview or anything like that. It's very like the pipeline is once you're in, you can uh, you can expect to get a return offer if your performance is good. Now you were flown out to Seattle for the the for those interviews. Did you work in Washington State or did you work in North Carolina? Yes. So um, my first internship, I worked in Washington State. Um, my second one, it was supposed to be in Washington State, but since it was this summer of 2020, it was remote. Uh, so I worked from North Carolina this summer. And are you going to are you going to work for Microsoft after you finish up, or are you going to do something else? I plan to work for Microsoft. I actually just um, got my full time offer. Uh, we're still working through the specifics of it. Um, so, so yeah, I plan to work for Microsoft. Do, do you think they'll ask you to ro work remote in the beginning and then move you to relocate you somewhere? Yeah, so one thing that's great about my, the offer that I just got, they, they gave me the option to be, they gave me the option to be remote um, full time. So um, that's one of the things that I asked for when I was interviewing because this, this past summer working as a remote intern, it was, I mean, it was great. I was, I, I can be, I'm very productive this past summer working remotely. So that's what I um, asked for, um, for my full time offer. And they fortunately granted that. Do you think you might want to go for further education later? Yes, I definitely think I want to go for further education. Um, I'm considering um, a couple different paths because in, in product management, which is the field that I'm that I'm in, it, it benefits you to have some business knowledge. Um, all product managers have to have some business knowledge, but you also need some domain knowledge, especially as a tech product manager. Um, you need some domain knowledge about how the tech gets built. So right now I'm considering uh, between a master's degree in computer science or an MBA. So just that'll probably depend on my experience in my first few um, weeks or, or months or years working, uh, which, which one I choose. So. Now, if you were to go back to your high school representing North Carolina State University, what would you mm -hmm. tell them about your experiences there versus other schools they might be thinking about? That's a great question. One thing I'd say about NC State is that NC State is plugged into the surrounding community. One thing that's amazing about the triangle is that the community really interacts very, I mean, they, we interact all the time. So there's opportunities for students to get involved in the surrounding ecosystem, even outside of NC State. There are a lot of startups in North Carolina. There are a lot of huge companies headquartered here. There are a lot of companies who have, like, who have satellite offices here that you can interact with um, outside of even your school. And then I say, on, even on campus at NC State, NC State has companies who live on campus. They have, they have offices on NC State's campus. Uh, my first internship with Bandwidth, Bandwidth ha Bandwidth's headquarters is on NC State's campus. So um, you have an opportunity to interact with all these amazing companies right from your backyard. Um, and that, that's something that I didn't see in a lot of the schools that I considered. The main other school that I was looking at was Georgia Tech. Um, and Georgia Tech, obviously one of the best engineering schools out there. Um, but I chose NC State because of the um, surrounding community that I could involve myself in. And because um, NC State also puts a lot into the scholarship uh, offers that students get. Um, so even after you, um, 
come to NC State if you if you don't have a scholarship before you get there. NC State has scholarships for students even after you get there based on your performance during the years. So NC State invests heavily into students. Uh, NC State has an entire campus dedicated to engineering, uh, which I really appreciated and the resources I felt were just unmatched. So that's what I would say. And aside from work and school, what else did you like to do when you were there? Yeah, that is, that's a good question. So I, um, the, I participated in a lot of sports, uh, mainly basketball. Um, I, the gym, uh, NC State has invested a lot into the gym. I mean, they're rebuilding uh, new gyms right now. Um, that's one thing I really spent a lot of time doing. I also um, started an organization on campus my freshman and sophomore year, um, education-based organization um, that I spent a lot of time working on. Um, NC State also, like my personal community, I spent a lot of time with friends. They had a lot of events for um, students to participate in on campus. And I also did a lot of research. So every school year I was on someone's research team in very in a bunch of different areas i did a bunch of different things with my uh, i'm on the research team i was on so that's what i spent most of my time doing now what is one thing you might have in raleigh as a college town that you might not get in chapel hill or you might not get in athens georgia or you might not mm. get it penn state in state college pennsylvania that is a great question so uh, I would definitely take this with a grain of salt because I haven't been to any of those other cities. Okay. But Raleigh, like, it's like Raleigh lives NC State. Uh, like any, I would any business I would go to, I could use my student ID and get a discount. Um, so the businesses in Raleigh, like, they really support NC State students. The um, like company, like bowling alleys and movie theaters, would have like NC State specials. Um, so students could come and do things. Um, I'm sure that that probably is available other cities, but that's what I really appreciated about being in Raleigh. Um, other than that, like Raleigh, the, the community of businesses around um, Raleigh, they are filled with young professionals. And that's one thing, that's another thing I really appreciated. The businesses, there are a lot of startups, there are a lot of young companies uh, that have young professionals that you can network with. Sometimes networking with people who are later in their career is a bit intimidating, but having young professionals around uh, in those surrounding businesses has been uh, great for my development. I've met so many great mentors uh, that continue to kind of walk me and help me understand the, the world today. So. That's, that's what I'd say. Jalen, I hope when North Carolina State does their marketing that they feature you in it. <laughs> um, because th one of the things I, I tell students is try to do everything that the admissions people hope you'll do. You'll right. learn as best you can. Find a, find a major that is something you enjoy that you'll do well in and, and make friends and have right. activities that will, will support you and try to build a resume. And you've right. done all that at, at, a, at, a, at a state university that it's, it's quite good, but people don't think of it like Virginia or Georgia Tech. They don't think of it at that level. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. And what I definitely say to that, one piece of advice that I got when I was making my college choice was that it, does not, it doesn't necessarily matter what college you go to. It matters what you do in college. So the activities that you participate in, the projects that you do, the classes, the, um, the things that you do outside of class and inside of class, that's kind of what informs your career choices after you, uh, when you're looking for a job after you graduate, and not necessarily where you go or less where you go than actually what you do there. So that's one, another piece of advice I give to high school students when they're making that choice of uh, where should I go. So. Would you give that same advice to their parents? I would give, yeah, absolutely. I give the same advice to their parents. Um, 
Definitely. I mean, one thing that I've learned is that like parents and students often have like different views of like of the college or higher education landscape because I mean, our parents grew up in a different time where um, a college degree probably meant a lot. There are um, some jobs that like there, there are several different things you can do after you graduate college and uh, it definitely is informed by what you do there and not necessarily um, where you go. So I definitely give that advice to parents as well. Thank Jalen, thank you very much. That was a perfect closing uh, to, to our, our conversation. Um, listen, I hope that those who listen to this today take all that advice to heart. Um, mm -hmm. There's many good schools out there. A lot of schools try to make themselves affordable. A lot of mm -hmm. schools offer academic programs that can lead to careers, lead to graduate and professional school. And sometimes North Carolina State is a flagship state school. It's the land grant mm -hmm. University of North Carolina. Other schools don't have as big a name, but they do. They have as big an impact on their, their students and their alumni. So right. J thank Jalen, thank you again. And I hope, I hope you'll listen to this. I hope everyone listens to this interview more than once. <laughs> there's a lot of nuggets out of this that you may not get elsewhere. Right. Have a good day. Thank you. Have a good day. And thank you so much for having me. That was a great, that was great. Thank you. That was, that was great. Oops.